Hi. Uh, today we'll continue uh, the lectures on uh, DNA replication, repair, uh, and mutations. DNA replication. There is a necessity for precisely co copying DNA sequences during DNA replication in preparation for cell division. The base pairing template model theoretically could proceed by either conservative or semi-conservative mechanism. In the conservative, conservative mechanism, the two daughter strands form a new double-stranded DNA and the parent duplex would remain intact. While in the, the semi-conservative, the parent strand are separated and each would form a duplex molecule with the new, newly synthesized daughter uh, strand base pair to it. Definitive ev evidence that duplex DNA is replicated by a semi-conservative mechanism came from the classic Misselson and the Stahl experiment. In the Messelson and Stahl experiment, initially the E. coli were initially grown in a medium containing ammonium salts, and this medium contained um, uh, uh, the uh, radioactive isotope for nitrogen, which is a, a molecule in the nucleotide. So the resultant uh, DNA in the bacteria, um, in the E. coli, were, uh, were radioactive, emitting a radioactive um, uh, um, uh, emis emission. So we'll term it H. H stands for heavy. So both the parental, st the parental DNA will have uh, two strands um, uh, that are uh, composed of uh, radio-labeled nucleotides, and we term it heavy, heavy. And we are describing first the conservative mechanism. After first doubling in normal media containing the normal uh, nucleotide with the normal uh, N14, so if, 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 it, if the replication proceeds in a conservative ma manner, so uh, it will have another um, uh, bacteria with another uh, uh, du uh, duplex of DNA that composed mainly from the, from the media, which is uh, uh, light, so there is no radioactivity. After second doubling in, in, in normal media containing uh, a nitrogen that it is a 14, no radioactivity, the, the conservative mechanism proposed that new duplex will be formed as well uh, uh, for, e for, for each bacteria while uh, doubling that it's totally light, no radioactivity. So you can see, uh, you can see that the parent duplex, duplex initially from the first round is still existing up till uh, successive uh, rounds. But if we'll go for the semi-conservative mechanism and do the same um, um, uh, uh, growing uh, conditions, so we'll grow first in uh, uh, media with radioactive nitrogen, so it will have heavy and heavy, but in, after the first doublet, uh, do, uh, doubling, uh, you will see that in normal media, you will see that each parent, each daughter uh, uh, bacteria formed uh, from the parent bacteria will have a DNA strand that um, contain one duplex from uh, heavy, uh, uh, from heavy, um, uh, uh, heavy uh, radioactive isotopes, while the other one is normal, uh, uh, confirming that, uh, that uh, the parent duplex came from uh, one strand uh, from uh, uh, the parent, and the other strand uh, uh, built new complementary to the first one. And this is, uh, is confirmed after second doubling, so you can see that uh, always there is uh, the, the daughter um, uh, duplex will have one strand that will come from the parent, and another new strand will form from the medium. So the major difference here between the two mechanisms that you can see that the, in the conservative mechanism, if it's, if it's correct, so it, you will always have a duplex DNA that is heavy, heavy. While in semi-conservative mechanism, uh, there is another specific uh, uh, duplex that al always heavy and light. So, uh, so we need to confirm what actually happening because that's a theoretical approach. So here, uh, uh, practically, so they done experiment uh, to prove the uh, uh, Mason's stall. Ex uh, actually, it is a Mason's stall experiment to prove the semi-conservative mechanism. So the um, uh, uh, you can see here that the um, after growing the media, they isolated the DNA and um, uh, and uh, allowed the DNA to run on um, uh, agarose. So you can see the at generation zero, all of the all of the um, uh, bacteria, uh, that's mean before doubling, all the bacteria have 
a heavy heavy uh, duplex so you can see that uh, uh, from the figure so once uh, it moved to the first doubling highlighted by a red circle here you can see that um, the the heavy and heavy um, uh, peak uh, at density peak it's shifted toward the heavy and light and no more heavy and heavy uh, is appearing uh, on the uh, on the gel so after one generation one doubling um, of gross all extracted dna had the density of heavy uh, hn heavy and light dna while after nearly second doubling uh, dub, uh, dub, doubling 1.9 two generations mean approximately half dna had density of hla dna other half had density of ll dna as you can see that um, uh, the peak is um, divided between ll and hl and still there is no hh after further doub doubling at the 3.0 uh, generation, a larger fraction of the DNA consists of only LL uh, doublex. Uh, very few HL doublex and uh, HH doublex never uh, appeared. So that conf confirms that the mechanism of replication is uh, semi-conservative. So, so what is the steps of uh, DNA replication? Uh, generally, it's uh, three uh, major steps, unwinding of the DNA, adding short segments of RNA, and copying the DNA. In, un in unwinding of DNA, helicase enzymes start to break the hydrogen bond holding the two DNA strands together, unzipped DNA. Then the DNA binding proteins hold the strand apart. Then separation of strands occur in regions of uh, called origins of replication. So replication starts at these origins. Then a primase enzyme adds RNA primer, uh, and these RNA primers actually the st start the replication process. For copying the DNA, DNA polymerase enzyme binds to the RNA primers, and DNA polymerase uses nucleotide to synth synthesize complementary strands of DNA, and it's always working in one direction, five prime to three uh, prime direction. So. You can see here uh, the um, uh, parental DNA, once uh, there is a melting of the DNA, uh, the after separation or unzipping the DNA, uh, both uh, strands uh, serve as a parent strands, serve as a symbolet, and the new nucleotides are added uh, by the um, uh, by the polymerase, DNA polymerase, until two identical daughter molecules are formed. And this is a process occurring of the unzipping of the DNA while the new, uh, new forming strands are formed over complementary to the original strand. So DNA synthesis always proceed in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. DNA, DNA polymerase cannot initiate uh, chain synthesis de novo. That's mean by, by, uh, by their own selves. They need a short RNA or DNA strand, which is the primer, to begin chain uh, grass. The helix is actually unwinding or do the unwinding and melting of the parent DNA strands in order for the duplex DNA to function as a template during replication. The unwinding begins at the replication origins and usually the replication origins are 80 rich uh, sequences of DNA. And this, at that location, a replication form is formed, a, re a replication fork is formed. Once, and this is the structure of the primer, it's a short, nucleotide, a short nucleotide sequence of RNA. Once helicase uh, unwound parent DNA, uh, RNA polymerase, uh, which is uh, RNA polymerase, uh, which is uh, called as well uh, primase, form a short primer, which actually around 12 nucleotide in size, complementary to the template strand. The primer is elongated by the DNA polymerase alpha, pol alpha, for another 25 nucleotide, forming a primer made of a part of a D RNA at the 5 end and the DNA at the 3 end. So actually the primer is like a mix between the nucleotides. The local unwinding of the duplex produces some called torsional stress, which is relieved by the topoisomerase 1. So here you can see uh, how the process of uh, 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 replication occurs. Helicase start unwinding the DNA. Then replication at the uh, replication starts as replication origin at the AT rich region. Start uh, uh, a primer which appears in red here, and it starts doing the uh, addition of the nucleotide based on uh, complementary to the parent strands. 
Uh, from this, you can see that you have uh, two kinds of strands forming the new strands. One of them is leading strand because it's not uninterrupted while doing the addition of the new uh, nucleotide and formation of the strand, while the other one is called the lagging strands. Because actually, why there is a lagging strand? Because it is actually uh, synthesized in the opposite direction. So uh, the polymer is taking time doing small fragments called Okazaki fragments. Uh, so that's why uh, this, uh, the, in this lagging strand, the, st uh, the strand is interrupted. So initially it's formed of a segments, as I said, uh, it's called Okazaki frag fragments. And this fragment soon later after that will be ligated. So polymerase zeta synthesizes the leading strand, while polymerase uh, uh, delta replaces the ribonucleotide of the primer with the DNTP uh, and synthesizes la the lagging strand. So again, you can see here that uh, 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 the lagging strand is characterized uh, by formation of uh, uh, discontinuous uh, segments that uh, soon, uh, by the effect of a ligase enzyme, will be ligated and the primers will be, as we said, uh, primer sequences will be removed and replaced by deoxyribonucleotides. And here you can see an animated, uh, uh, animated uh, figure to see the process of uh, replication. Actually, it's, it's, it's more complex than we discussed here. So you can see uh, how the nucleotide is added. This is a double strand that has been melted. And you can see you can differentiate between a double strand formed and the single strand by the thickness. Actually, uh, DNA replication occur by directionally from each origin. So actually, there is there are two replication forks that might assemble at a single origin and then moves in opposite directions, leading to bidirectional uh, growth of, of both uh, daughter strands. Eukaryotic chromosomal DNA molecule contain multiple replication origin. So you can see here, looking into uh, the uh, circular viral uh, chromosome. A chromosome, you can see that a replication bubble appear in the middle uh, as um, shown by the figure on the left and then you can see that this replication bubble is start to increase uh, and, you, and you have now two replication uh, fork uh, at the side of the bubble. So going closely into the bidirectional uh, replication, you can see that helicase is attached to the DNA trying to melting the DNA. Uh, they melt the DNA in, uh, two, uh, in the two ends and form a, a replication bubble. Uh, soon after that, uh, the leading strand start to be synthesized and you can see by, uh, represented by the red arrow. So it start to go forward in the direction of five prime, three prime, and now the leading strand is formed. Again, the helicase um, unwind more of the DNA, leaving spaces uh, of a single DNA that need to be um, uh, 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 need to have a, a complementary strand for the replication. So soon after that, uh, the leading strand continues to do the uh, replication by the RNA polymerase. But the problem here that there is a, a region behind the primer, which is represented here by the red uh, 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 segment, the region behind the, the uh, this leading strand uh, cannot be done by the same way of the leading strand because it, the RNA polymerase can, cannot move in the other way. So here, Another primer is added as long as the helicase is moving and opening the DNA and now the RNA polymerase start doing another uh, round of uh, uh, replication to, to, uh, to do the missing part uh, of the uh, uh, replication until meet the, uh, um, the edge, the, f the initial edge of the leading strand and do ligation. DNA repair. Damage to the DNA is unavoidable and arises in many ways. DNA damage can be caused by spontaneous cleavage of chemical bonds in DNA, environmental agents such as ultraviolet and ionizing radiation, reaction with genotoxic chemicals that occur in the environment. A change in normal DNA sequence is called a mutation. 
Mutation can occur during replication when DNA polymerase insert wrong nucleotide as it reads a damage a template. It also can occur at low frequency as a result of copying error introduced by DNA polymerase itself when they replicate undamaged uh, template. If such mutation were left uncorrected, DNA in germ cells might incur, incur too many mutations for viable offspring to be formed. Cellular mechanisms repair these damaged DNA and correcting sequences error. When repair mechanisms are compromised or failed, mutations accumulate in the cell DNA. No surprise that defect in DNA repair mechanisms are, are, and the cancer are closely related. So initially, we'll talk with the DNA polymerases can introduce copying error and as well can correct these copying errors. The first line of defense is preventing in preventing mutation in, is the DNA polymerase itself. E. coli DNA polymerase introduce about one incorrect nucleotide every 10,000 polymerized nucle nucleotide. Yet, the measured mutation rate in bacterial cell is much lower. It's about one in a, in a billion nucleotide. That means that the polymerase, there is something that is correcting the, uh, the initial rate. This is, this is called proofreading, which is done actually by the DNA polymerase itself of the E. coli. So you can see here, when the in, in the first figure, when the incorrect base is incorporated during the DNA synthesis, uh, base bearing occur between the three prime end of the new, uh, of the nascent uh, strand uh, doesn't occur, and the and as a result the polymerase opposes because it it introduces a, a faulty nucleotide, so the polymerase opposes and then as as you can see in the next figure, uh, the figure to the right, that the the three prime end actually the growing chain. To its uh, is moved. This uh, strand is moved to another domain of the RNA of the DNA polymerase, which is the exonuclease domain. So it moves from the finger of the polymer polymerization into another finger, another domain of the exonuclease domain, where the incorrect mispaired base is removed. Soon after that, the uh, the single the growing nascent strand is retained back to the polymerization finger to do uh, the uh, 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 polymerization and the replication of the DNA. So then the three prime end, as we said, is transferred back to the polymerase site where the region is copied uh, correctly. So, as a type as well of uh, uh, damaged DNA, chemical and radiation damaged DNA can lead to mutations. About 10,000 to a million per day DNA damage events in a single human cell. Normal cellular reaction, including the movement of electrons along the ETC electron transport chain in the mitochondria and lipid oxidation in peroxomes, produce several chemicals that damage DNA, including the hydroxide radicals and superoxide. These chemicals can also cause a mutation that lead to cancers. Many spontaneous mutations are point mutations, which, act, which actually change in a single base pair in DNA. A point mutation can induce a stop coding, causing a nonsense mutation. That, as a result of that, uh, uh, this uh, nonsense mutation can cause premature termination of a protein uh, synthesis. That means it will produce a truncated version of the protein. Nonsense mutations convert a codon that normally encodes an amino acid into stop codon, such a change in UEC that encodes tyrosine to UEG, that's a point mutation. UEG actually is a stop codon, so it will produce, um, after translation, a truncated non-functional uh, DNA uh, protein is produced. While silent mutations don't change the amino acid sequence, the point mutations can also occur in non-protein coding DNA sequence that function in the regulation of gene uh, transcription, like the promoton regions, like the enhancer regions. One of the most frequent causes of point mutation is a deamination of cytosine. This deamination converted into a cell base. So you can see here. Another is deamination of modified 5-methyl uh, cytosine, which you form a thiamine. So you can see here, the 5-methyl cytosine, once there is a deamination, it will be formed to a thiamine. So deamination leads to a point mutation. 
if these alterations is are not corrected before the DNA is replicated, this will create a permanent change in DNA sequence. So you can see here that the wild type DNA, the wild type DNA, have a methylated cytosine uh, pairs with a G. Um, if a deamination occur, this will the methylated uh, cytosine will be a thiamine. A thiamine that if the uh, mutation this um, alteration is not changed upon replication we will have two uh, uh, two uh, daughter uh, uh, duplex of dna one of them will uh, looks like the wild type while the other will be mutant so it needs a mechanism for repairing which is called phase accession repair The high fidelity DNA accession repair system recognize and repair damage. In addition to proofreading, cell have an accession repair systems for preventing mutation. Actually, a segment of the damaged DNA strand is excised and the gap is filled by DNA polymerase and the lycase, using the complementary strand DNA strand as a template. While the base accession repair works on the TG mismatch and the damaged bases, in human, the most common type of point mutation is a change from C to T which is caused by the emanation of 5 methylcytosine, as, as we have just said. The repair system evolved to remove the T and replace it with a C, because otherwise it will be, it will be passed to uh, offsprings. So you can see here, there is an uh, enzyme called DNA glycolase, so it, it will remove the uh, T uh, forming and then do ligation, and then another enzyme called the APE1 endonuclease will again do like a restriction, like cutting the single DNA strand. And then the AP lyase, it's a part of the DNA polymerase beta, will do with with the action with with the action with the ligase will introduce the correct uh, base, which is cytosine, and hence now we have a repaired wild type DNA. So that's a base accession repair. And it works on a TG uh, mismatch, because initially there was a T that have been deaminated from a 5-methyl cytosine. So human cells contain a battery of glycolases. It's not only one DNA glyco glycosylases, each of which is specific for a different set of chemically modified DNA bases. Mismatch accession repair repairs other mismatches and small insertions and deletions. This repair mechanism is conserved from bacteria to human. So you can see it eliminates base pair mismatches and insertion or deletion of one or few nucleotides that are accidentally introduced by DNA polymerase during the process of replication. So you can see here that A pairs with C, which is odd and it's not, it's not normal. So a pair of proteins, which called MSH2 and MSH6, just bind at that location and, M, uh, and this, uh, with addition with the nuclease and the helicase and exonuclease, will remove a, a, a whole junk of uh, a whole piece uh, of uh, surrounding the site of the mutation. Um, uh, and then a gap repair will occur by DNA polymerase and ligase to introduce the segment again, but now with a, a correct a complementary base, which in this case will be T. How this match accession repair system distinguish between the normal and the muted strand is not known with certainty. In contrast, in contrast to the base accession repair mismatch, this mechanism occur after the DNA replication. Note, if both copies of these two important protein, uh, MLH1 and MSH2 genes are non-functional, that's mean loss of function mutation, that's mean the gene which is transcribed for this uh, protein that recognizes the site of the mutation on the DNA are um, mutated, then the protein will be non-functional, then the mismatch repair system is lost, and this is common in non-inherited forms of colon cancer. Another uh, mechanism for repair, it's a nucleotide accession repairs, and this works on chemical adducts that distort the normal DNA shape. Cells use NER to fix DNA regions containing chemically modified base, bases, often called chemical adducts. So certain proteins slide along the double-stranded DNA molecule looking for bulges or other irregularity in the shape of the DNA duplex. 
how these uh, regularity uh, look like you know, in a D on a DNA duplex. So you can see here, sometimes you have a two thymine residues, two successive thymine residues for some reason due to irradiation, UV irradiation. Uh, there is a, a bonding occur forming thymine thymine dimer residue as you can see this thymine thymine uh, 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 dimer residue uh, will uh, make a bulge in the DNA uh, this uh, so it needs uh, this mechanism to repair these uh, dimers caused by the UV light because this dimer will interfere with the transcription and replication of DNA So how that occur? So you can see here the dimer represented by the sketch of the above. So the initial damage is recognized by XPC uh, uh, protein. Uh, this recognized, then uh, this, have a, uh, this uh, protein have an helicase activity that opens the DNA double, uh, duplex to form a bubble that is around 25 base uh, pair. This uh, soon after that, uh, the segments, uh, the segment of the DNA that have the uh, the Simon thymine dimer, will be excised out, and the the, 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 the uh, these um, proteins will cut uh, the damaged strand at around from 24 to 32 base apart on the each side of the lesion. Then again, DNA polymerase with DNA ligase will introduce uh, a complementary segment with the two uh, with the thymine, but in this case, normal one to read, to to go back to the wild type uh, DNA. The use of TF2H transcription factor 2H in transcription and DNA repair explain that the DNA damage in higher eukaryotes is repaired at much faster rate in regions of the genome being actively transcribed than in transcribed region. This phenomenon is called the transcription coupled repair. So in other words, uh, there is a correcting of error. Actually, this is a proofreading. It's a type of proofreading. Once the error happened during transcription is it is straight away uh, repaired. That's why it's calling uh, it's called a transcription coupled repair, repair. That's why the TF2H is used for w with the help of he its the helicase activity to uh, participate in the process of the transcription coupled repair. Loss of DNA repair system can of course lead to cancer. Examples like the xeroderma uh, pigmentosum uh, is a genetically heterogeneous autosomal recessive disorder characterized by increased sensitivity to sunlight with the development of carcinoma, carcinomas at an early age, uh, age. And actually this is why, because there are seven of the eight known XP genes in code component of the excision repair uh, machinery. And in the absence of this repair mechanism, genes that control the cell cycle or regulate the cell growth become mutated. That's why the cells lose the control and um, go into successive uncontrolled cell division leading to cancer. So actually, the types of mutation that control a cancer uh, can be divided into two kinds of mutation. Gain of function mutation that convert the proto-oncogenes into oncogene and loss of function mutation in tumor suppressor gene um, are on oncogenic. So basically there, is, uh, there are two general classes of genes that control the regulation of and the, the proliferation of cells. Uh, one one uh, type of gene is called the tumor suppressor gene, and the others are proto-oncogenes. Once the proto-oncogenes are activated, it turns into oncogenes that promote the uh, uh, uncontrolled cell division of cells. The, 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 uh, the break of this uh, process is the tumor suppressor gene. And if this tumor suppressor gene lost its function, it will... It will um, the cell will move more in the direction of uncontrolled cell, div uh, cell division. So for the gain of function mutation, they found that at least four mechanisms can produce oncogenes from the proto-oncogenes. Point mutation, chromosomal translocation, chromosomal translocation again, uh, the first one leads to a chimeric uh, proteins with constantly active, that means it's hyperactive, unlike the parent protein, so if this protein controls the progression of the cell cycle, if it's hyperactive, uh, the cell cycle will be um, operated in a maximum. The other chromosomal translocation can bring inappropriate expression of gene. That means the gene can be expressed, overexpressed, not the regular uh, under under regulation. Amplification, that means there is abnormal DNA replication of a DNA segments that include a proto-oncogene. 
so we will have numerous copies of these uh, genes leading to overproduction of the encoded protein while these the point mutation can lead as well to uh, constantly active uh, protein products while the loss of function prominent during the uh, among the classes of protein that encode uh, and can be classified into five intracellular protein so if you have a point a loss of function mutation in intracellular proteins that regulate or inhibit entry to the cell cycle receptor or signal transduce, transducers for secreted hormone or developmental signal that inhibit cell proliferation check a point a pathway protein that arrests the cell cycle if something wrong happened like DNA damage proteins that promote apoptosis if they have loss of function so there will no there will be no apoptosis enzymes that participate in DNA re repair if of course if you have a loss of function for this enzyme there will be no DNA repair this can be summarized in the on this can be summarized in this figure so you can see here that cancer can can result from expression of a mutant form of a seven types of protein the first type is the signaling molecules if, if the cell is receiving a lot of signal the, it, the action will be amplified the receptor as well the signal receptors either the receptor is uh, uh, on the surface of the cell or, or or nuclear receptor like intracellular receptor if they are in, uh, amplified or um, overexpressed they will amplify the signal as well intracellular transducer that uh, that um, uh, transmit the signal from the cell membrane into uh, to inside to the nucleus if they are overexpressed or um, mutated they they, they might um, amplify the signal transcription factor as well if they are mutated for a, for a mutation that lead to uh, uh, overexpression or activity more activity it lead to uh, the uh, more expression of the uh, of the gene they control cell cycle control protein if something like um, uh, loss of function uh, then there will be no control on the cell cycle dna repair proteins of course if there is a mutation in this uh, class of proteins the cell will uh, will be uh, heavily mutated apoptotic proteins as well it controls the apoptotic pathway so any mutation in these seven classes of protein uh, may result to a cancer Colon cancers, actually, it is a, a very um, well-studied model for a successive onc oncogenic mutations. It is called the multi-hit model because there is a number of, of mutations that um, successively lead to, to the colon cancer. Colon cancer evolves through distinct, well-characterized morpho morphological stages. So it starts with a polyp, then um, uh, by a number of um, uh, uh, other mutations, it will turn to a benign adenomas, and then after another set of mutations, it will be transformed to carcinomas. So you can see from the figure, that's a normal uh, colon uh, cells. Once there is a loss of ABC, uh, which is a tumor suppressor gene found on chromosome uh, 5, once this, um, there is a loss of function for this tumor suppressor gene, ABC, of course, encodes a protein that inhibits the progression of a certain types of cells through the cell cycle. So if there is a loss of function, the cell will be uncontrolled to go into another cell cycle. So a bulb, a small gross, starts to form on the colon of the cancer. This, uh, this gross starts to increase uh, uh, in size, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, bulb starts to increase in size. The ABC protein prevents the wind signaling transduction pathway from activating expression of an important proto-oncogene, which is CMEK gene. The loss of function of mutation for this APC protein leads to inappropriate production of CMIC, so MIC now is not under control. And actually, CMIC is a transcription factor that induces the expression of many genes required for the transition from the G1 to S cell cycle. So if you think closely, ABC will not uh, control CMIC. So MIC will work at full power. So more cells will transit from the G1 to S and to progress through the cell cycle uncontrolled. Another mutation, uh, if happened, is the activation of the KRAS oncogene uh, found on the uh, chromosome 12. That's a gain of function mutation. That's mean it amplified the signal of KRAS. 
this keras will form if, if it happen it will convert the polyp into class uh, 2 adenomas it's still benign the class 2 adenomas um, soon after that if a loss of function as well for the for one of the master regulator of the cell cycle b53 located on the chromosome 17 the class 2 adenomas is converted into class 3 adenomas but it's still a benign soon after that this uh, 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 B53, they found that half of all human tumors carry this loss of function mutation in B53. As I said, it is the master regulator of the cell cycle and encodes a transcription uh, regulator. So this led uh, to the transformation of the uh, class 3 uh, adenomas into the malignant carcinoma developed. Once they reach the malignant car carcinoma, so once they gain entry to a blood vessel, as you can see from the figure, with a lot of other changes after the, and a lot of other accumulating uh, mutations that lead to the uh, uh, escaping of this cell into a blood vessel, that's, that's, that's when the uh, tumor start to metastasize and uh, throughout the body. So majorly here you can see there are uh, three major uh, mutations. Uh, loss of function in APC, uh, gain of function in uh, KERAS, uh, loss of function in the B53 tumor suppressor uh, gene. So if we'll talk now uh, about the mutation and causes and the consequences. So mutation actually, as I said, is a change in the nucleotide sequence of DNA. Then it's a major cause of genetic diversity. It can be harmful as well. It can be uh, nonsense. So the types of mutation are either point, silent, mis mis sense, nonsense, frame shift mutation. They are inherited through gametes or acquired if, it ha if they happen in the somatic cells. Human genomes are approximate, approximately 99.9% .9 identical. 0.1 difference in DNA occur between individuals. Roughly, there are around 3 million differences um, uh, between different individuals. Most mutations have no obvious effect. Other mutations strongly influence the cell function, behavior, and susceptibility to genetic diseases. So gene mutations can cause changes in the protein structure function. A synthesis of and can lead to a synthesis of non-functional protein or no protein can synthesize can be synthesized at all. This lead to the loss of the trait or the change of the trait of the phenotype. So biotechnology is being used now to detect the correct mutations. So uh, in this figure we'll summarize uh, the uh, types of genes. So we assume here that we have a normal wild type gene, so you can see it's a double strand and the, uh, a single strand is of DNA, template DNA, there are transcription and this transcription after that it is translated and you can see that it, is, it has been translated into a four uh, amino acids starting from the AG, the messenger RNA, uh, ending by UAA which is the stop codon. There are two, majorly two types of mutation, either a base pair substitution or a base pair insertion or deletion. In base pair substitution, you can see that uh, the uh, originally uh, G in the wild type, single-stranded DNA, is, uh, is replaced by uh, A. And so once transcribed, uh, it will, and, uh, as you can see, it is not affecting the protein sequence format. So that's why it's a silent mutation, no effect, no effect on the amino acid sequence. In the other type, you can see that the, um, uh, uh, this base bear substitution have led to a change in the amino acid sequence. Uh, serine has been translated instead of glycine. So this is a missense mutation because the coded amino acid is changed. In the last type of the base bear substitution, uh, it, um, the insertion in that position creates a stop codon which form a truncated protein of only uh, methionine. So that's a nonsense mutation because it uh, creates a stop codon. While in base, ex base bear insertion or deletion, you can see that uh, there is a frame shift uh, causing extensive uh, missense. What's the frame shift? You can see that the T, uh, you can see here that um, uh, T has been uh, removed so you can see it changed the sequence of the uh, from the wild type uh, single stranded DNA. Uh, there is a loss of one nucleotide. So actually, this as well changes the sequence of uh, amino acids. So in frame shift causing immediate response. So you can see here uh, a nucleotide have been uh, added 
So this as well changed the sequence of the, nucle uh, of the nucleotides of the messenger RNA leading to a truncated uh, version of protein because the stop codon have been uh, arise in the reading of the uh, messenger RNA during translation. While here you can see it can happen that insertion or regulation of a three nucleotide uh, leading to um, a formation as well uh, of a type of um, frame shifting because uh, a, a, a TTG have been uh, uh, removed. So you can see as well it changed the sequence of the uh, nucleotides uh, of the nucleotides of messenger RNA as well change the sequence of the amino acids of the uh, protein translated. Thank you.